Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a chauffeur or trumpet. Show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and they delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their Elohim. They ask of me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching to Elohim. Wherefore have we fasted, they say, and you don't see it. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul? We're suffering, and you don't know it. Behold, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure, and you exact all of your labors. So you do nothing. Behold, you fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. You should not fast as you do this day to make your voice to be heard upon high. Now that's a lesson. Is it such the fast that I have chosen, says Yahuwah? A day for a man or woman to afflict his or her soul. In other words, because you're not eating, because you're not drinking. I'm not impressed. It, this is Yah. This is where there's a question mark behind that. I'm going to read it again. Behold, you fast for strife because you got bitter, something going on with you, and debate because you're disagreeable, and you smite with the fist of wickedness because you have bitterness in your heart. You shall not fast as you do this day to make your voice to be heard by the Most High. Is, is, such, is it such a fast that I have chosen? Y'all saying that's not the reason he directed us to fast. He said that's that's what man, that's religion. You know, that's the seven day Adventists, the Baptists, <laughs> Pentecostals, the ill carrying them old ways. Here is the reason, he says, go on. Is it is it a day for a man to afflict his soul? Question mark. It is to bow down his head as a bulrush? and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will you call this a fast, an acceptable day to Yahuwah? Is not the fast that I have chosen? To loose the band of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke, things that got you choked up, things that have us locked up. It is not to deal your bread. Is it not to deal your bread to the hungry? This for all of the selfish ones out there. And not to bring the poor that are cast out to your house? He said, when you see the naked, do you cover them? And that you hide not yourself from your own flesh? Question mark again. Isolation question. He said, then... Shall your light break forth as the morning, and your health shall bring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you, and the glory of your whore shall be your reward. Then shall you call, and your whore shall answer. And I like that. He's saying that if, if, if we're fasting for any reason other than to release ourselves from our own yoke, the things that we care about, the things we're concerned about, he said, if we're doing any of that, that's an unacceptable fast. All fasting is to be on the basis of humility so that you can serve others. Not Yahuwah, by the way. Others. I'm going to reverse it again. Then show you break, then show, he said, when you deny yourself, <laughs> hallelujah, he said, then you, shall your light break forth as the morning and your health shall spring forth speedily. So that's all of my brothers and sisters who are ill in your bodies. And your righteousness shall go before you and the glory of your whore shall be your reward. Then and only then shall you call and your whore shall answer. You shall cry and he shall say, here am I. If you take away from the midst of you the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and it was turning the finger at other people, blaming others for your situation. 
and quit speaking vanity. Hallelujah. In other words, destructive or instead of being destructive, we are supposed to be being constructive with our words. And a part of construction, again, just so that we're clear here, is a warning to people when people are doing things the wrong way. That's called constructive criticism. But pointing the finger, blaming everybody else, blaming somebody else, that's destructive. That's selfishness. And if your fast is for anything, your fast is the fact that Yah is saying you need to be fasting to change your ways. You need to be fasting to change selfish behaviors. Otherwise, Yah saying, I don't hear your prayers. Now, you can go back and you read that a hundred thousand times, my brothers and sisters, and it will not change. Okay? Praise Yahuwah. But anyway, brothers and sisters, <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> you know, I know I pretty much started breaking down this particular um, scripture already because I think it's important. We were talking just recently, you know, about fasting and, and you know, and, and how does fast works for Israel? And I think it's, uh, it's important that we understand that because, you know, Christianity created a Stockholm syndrome for us. And many of us who have come out of Christianity, including myself, you know, we, we, we detach from a lot of their idolatry. You know, we're not worshiping on Sundays anymore. We damn sure not praying to statues. We're surely not serving, you know, their heathen gods. But some of us are still holding on to their customs. Take a look at yourself and ask yourself, for example, when you fast. Since this is about fasting and warning, cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice. So ask, here's a question I will present to any of us. So have your fast changed since you came into the truth? The way you fast, your mindset of fasting. So let's just say if you've been fasting for 20 years, but you came into the truth of who you are as Israel in the last, I don't know, let's just say five years. Are you fasting the way you've been fasting over the last 20 years or in the last five years you're obeying Isaiah 58 when you fast? Because you're still fasting the same way. Remember, that's those were Christian fasts. I want to get closer to Yah. I want to be able to hear His voice. We need to raise money for the church. We're going to go on a Daniel fast. We're not going to eat anything sweet. If that's your mindset for fasting, it's the exact same way the heathens fast. And did our book tell us learn not the way of the heathens? Did not we learn that in Jeremiah chapter 10? Did not y'all warn us that in Deuteronomy chapter 18 and 9? Learn not the ways of the nations around us. You know, when we fast, brothers and sisters, we're supposed to be fasting so that Yahweh center our focus on the less fortunate. So that we may be able to feel our purpose in helping them. That includes just my, myself. My fasting, to give you an idea, should be centered around teaching, listening. You know, joining our sisters and brothers in prayer if they have a need. If they're someone that's sick, someone that they love. Maybe, you know, there are some advice that they need, counseling that they might want. Creating an avenue or a safe place where they can read their word in a collective group, like the Bible studies. Creating an environment where they don't feel so alone. Because this could be a long walk when you're serving your who are in the truth. So we have a Zoom call so we can interact and we can talk face to face. No one hides behind the camera anymore. And of course, every Shabbat showing up with lessons that were put together by myself using Yah's word through prayer through self-denial, I don't do what I want to do. My life is not centered on me anymore. It used to be, not anymore. 
My life is centered upon doing the work of Yahuwah and what can I do for my brothers and sisters to ensure that, you know, their yokes are being broke. What is the yoke I'm talking about? That they, that they, they have, again, uh, an outlet, a way out, you know, an environment for which they can fellowship and hear the word, you know, uh, uncorrupted, hear the word in truth and teach all of the Tanakh. Not just, you know, certain verses like you'll see, you know, with the Geno Jennings and some of those demons. Praise your So we all have work to do. We all have responsibilities to do. And your fast should be so that you can fulfill those responsibilities. And l let me emphasize again. It's never about you. If you're fasting, you know, and it's about you. Then that's not the fast that Yahuwah it's requiring of you. And that fast, all it's going to do for you, if you're not eating, you're just going to be hungry. If you're not drinking anything, you're just going to be thirsty. And that's all you, when you get your water and you finally eat something, then that's your reward for your fast. Except it be the way that Yahuwah says. And that is, you're fasting to be a better blessing to your brothers and sisters before Yahuwah. Hallelujah. And while I'm thinking about this, I'm going to shift a little bit. I hope that helps you understand fast. And again, fast the right way because then y'all say what? I'm going to hear you. So as we look at doing things for others, guess what y'all is doing? He's looking at providing the things for us. He said, you take care of the need of your brethren and I'll make sure your needs are being taken care of, not only by your brethren, but I'll make sure your needs are being taken care of by me and I will send the angels Whenever necessary, what you can't do, if you can't do the heavy lifting, you know, that stuff, y'all say, I'm going to send some folk, you know what I'm saying, who can. <laughs> and there is nothing too hard for your whore. Hallelujah. So we covered the fasting, all right? But I do want to come back and, you know, you know, Isaiah 58, you know, and one has always been one of my favorite scriptures because it reminds me that God doesn't want us sitting on the sideline, you know, whispering, afraid to say certain things because someone might get offended. Especially when there are things going on that, that can hinder our power. He said, no, you cry aloud. You spare, don't, don't spare them. Lift up your voice. Make sure everybody, and that's he said, if they get mad, he said, better. The more of them get mad, he said, the better you're doing, brother DFG. Not just for me, but he just telling, I tell him, y'all saying, look, the more those you make angry, the more impactful you're being. So he said, so when they get mad and they start to scramble and they start to talking, they start to pring a finger pointing, as he said right here, they get into their vanity, vanity gossiping. Oh, poor me, look at me. I'm just all alone. Nobody love me. Nobody want me. Why they don't come for me? Why they leave me? He said, all that vanity. He said, no, you say you call that mess out. Yeah, I said, tell him, I said, quit playing. So I told you. And, and that's what I do. I share it just as he has said it. And again, go back and read it. Come right behind me. You finger perners. You one who wants to blame everybody else for your situation. Do you over here who are in vanity? It's all about you. Where you got to be comfortable. We're going to talk about that. Today's lesson is going to be about a mighty man who left all of his comforts because he cared more about Yahuwah's people than he did about himself. He was seeking the truth and he was willing to put his life on the line to establish what that truth was. Hallelujah. But Isaiah 58 again brings one more thing to mind. And this is to all the daughters of Zion that are hearing. And typically, you know, there are hundreds who watch the channel. There are thousands of hours of video <laughs> from this particular channel. I'm sure y'all know that already by now. I said thousands of hours, not a thousand, thousands of hours. Brother been around for over a decade and been teaching all that time. I think that shows a little commitment, which you have to agree. <laughs> Most of that time, you know, totally independent of anybody else, you know, growing, 
falling, getting up, growing some more, falling, getting up, growing some more. When I say fall, though, I didn't quit. You know, I was just, I was growing. I was in my learning curve, as they say. And many times, you know what I'm saying, when you're going through learning, you're going to have some setbacks. But don't let that discourage you, brothers. It says, a righteous man fall at seven times. What did it say, brothers and sisters? Yahuwah shall lift him or pick her, him up. So it's a journey. But as long as you keep your eyes on the prize, and the prize is Yahuwah and his people, then he will never leave nor forsake you. He will always guide you. And if you do fall, or as David say, if you fall and, you know, you he's going to keep you from bruising your feet. In other words, he's going to undergird us. But this is what I'm saying to my sisters. I want to get to this. It's taking me a minute to get to this, but it's important. So you sisters who are following the channel, you know, as you guys probably already know, the heathens have come up with another clever way to monetize themselves. And, truth be told, cause pushing their agenda, their feminist agenda. I don't need a man. I just need ya. <laughs> Boy, you can show me that in this book and I will show you a lie. <laughs> Matter of fact, you show me this book, I will show, I will tell you, you a lie. That ain't in this book. You're not going to find that in this book. That's the heathen's lies. Y'all made the man, then he made the woman for the man. And no matter how you want to slice that, it ain't ever going to be any, you know, thinner or thicker. His word is true. It's pure. And nothing you can do to change that, whether you like it or not. It is what it is. But they've come up with this Woman History Month. And I bring this out because there's one of our sisters and you can go to our channel. It's going to be Isaiah. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's really, it's, got, it's, 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 it's 5081 cry aloud. So my sisters out there, you who are listening, you know, if you want to counter this so-called Woman's History Month, then the sister is doing a series of lessons about the daughters of Zion. Women like yourself, believing women, strong women. Women who put it all on the line for Yasharel. So, whether you subscribe or not to the channel, that I cannot tell you to do. But, if you want to hear the word, or you want to hear real woman history, since they've come up with their woman history month, then why not hear what your grandmothers, those who were here before you, why not learn about them? Wouldn't that be a great time to learn about them and then teach your daughters things that they're not going to learn in these heathen schools and they damn sure not going to learn it in these heathen churches. So again, her channel is, is, is uh, 581 Cry Aloud and she's teaching a series and I suspect she's probably going to do it all month. I think she's already taught on Sarah and I, I you know, I'm not trying to, you know, sister, if she's following the Ruhuk, I know y'all will say, she said Deborah, but y'all might tell her to go to Susanna, might tell her to go to Judith, you know, who's to say? Esther. But whatever way she goes, daughter's design, I'm going to tell you something. You'll learn a thing or two. And it'll cause you to be able to really, again, strengthen your resolve so you understand your place. So you'll know that Yah requires more of you than having your head covered with, and keeping your mouth shut. Isn't that what those heathens taught in Christianity? Isn't that what they still, those heathens who are no longer Christians anymore, they quick to tell daughters, Zion, cover up your head and shut your mouth. <laughs> we don't talk about that over here in the DFG family. We don't play that. If the daughters of Zion have a role, you can believe that role is to strengthen Yasharel. You can't do that with walking around with your head covered, with your head down, barefoot in the kitchen, thinking that somehow or another that's what Yah calls of you. No, that's your Christian behavior still affecting you. Do you compete with your man? Absolutely not. Do you compete with your brothers? Absolutely not. 
but do you stand and fight alongside them whenever called upon? So I just wanted to share that because I think what she's doing right now will be a blessing, you know, to the daughters of Zion. All right. Again, Isaiah 58 and 1, it cries aloud is her channel. And so, um, again, if you want to counter this heathenistic, you know, divisive, you know, woman history month jogging, vanity, then go over there because I guarantee you, it's just going to strengthen you and you can come back and strengthen your daughters. And the other sisters who may not have any idea about some of the great things the women of Yasharel have done for the people of Yasharel. Okay? All right. And then one more thing. <laughs> then we're going to get into the meat of the lesson today. And uh, I want to remind my brothers and sisters that we have a Zoom call on Friday nights for Yasharel. And this, this Friday just passed here. I'm telling you, we, for an hour and a half, and you didn't have to stay, you could have stayed 10 minutes, but we had, we had a great time, you know, and we talk about things that matter to Yasharel, you know, it's no pressure, you know, if you don't want to be a part of it, that's okay, but I'm just letting you know that some of our brothers and sisters, as you're going in Shabbat, you know, some of you may be trying, you probably, you may be channel surfing, trying to find things to watch, you know, and, and, and struggling in terms of that, because we, we practice here Shabbat sundown. Sundown to sundown. But uh, but once Shabbat is in, you know, sometimes it's like, okay, what, now what am I, what is what I do? Because I can't be clean, I can't be working, I can't be doing my pleasure. So I can just fellowship with my brothers and sisters. And last night, uh, we had a, we had a pretty good, we had a lot of company. I'm going to give you these names. I wrote a dog because I don't want to miss none of my brothers and sisters, all right? And this is not... To make anybody who wasn't a part of us feel kind of guilty. And then, no, this is an invitation. You know, like when we were in the heathen's world, somebody was having an event or something, you got an invitation, you know, to come because they felt that you were special. <laughs> well, this is this is that. All right? you We we invite you to be with us if you're Yasharel because we feel like you're special. So I want to just give a quick shout out to Brother Benjamin, Brother Mendez, Brother Franklin, Brother Derek Green, hallelujah. Uh, Sister Shauna, Sister Eva, Sister Wanda, Sister Sharon, and Sister Sheila. I mean, we have folks who from all over, from the United Kingdom to, to, to St. Martin, to Haiti, to South Carolina, <laughs> Houston, Texas, <laughs> Rhode Island, Mass I mean, Rhode Island, or Providence, Rhode Island. <laughs> Greater Boston, Massachusetts area. Did I miss anybody? Where y'all from? New Jersey? A little bit everywhere. Thanks, Sister Shana. I forgot what Sister Shana told me. Oh, Kansas City. Hallelujah. Midwest? <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh, and Sister Sharon, United Kingdom. And faithfully, she is there. All right? So she thinks it's worth it. And matter of fact, we were, it was right about uh, 9.30. Growing up on 9.30, we were about to wrap things up. And, you know, I asked her, there, so I said, what time is it? She said, well, oh, it's 2.30 in the morning. She said, but I set my alarm clock because I want to be with my family. <laughs> you know, it is, what, I'm just saying, it's a blessing. It is a blessing. And, you know, it's again, the question I should, we should always be asking, why would we not, you know, want to be around like-minded brothers and sisters. Many of us are living amongst relatives and family members who are non-believers. And we have to suffer through some of their, their foolishness. And we're warning them that some of these things they're doing are wrong, but they don't want to hear it. And y'all know they don't. So why not give yourself a break and say, you know what, I'm going to be with, you know, with DFG and those guys on Friday nights. At least they're talking about what I want to be talking about. Hallelujah. And again, that invitation is there. And, you know, and there's, you know, it starts with an email to me. And then, you know, we work from there. No cost to you, though. There's nothing that I do on this channel that's a cost to anybody. Although there are heathen liars out there who want to say, oh, the brother's charging people for the word. You're a liar. You're a damn lie. The word of Yah is free. And why are you asking for support? 
so that I can have, you know, the leverage and the resources to do this free work. The same reason why you pay for that Bible you got. You think the printers, the printers were free? You think the pages were free? You think the glue to put it together was free? The cover was free? But that's Israel and its jealousy and its envy and its bitterness. When they come down to the heathen, they run, run, run. But when they come to one of us for the truth, oh no, the word is, yeah, it's free. Brothers and sisters, ain't nothing in this world free. And as soon as we find, learn that in Israel, there's no free lunch, the better off we'll be. But, you know, stupid is as stupid does. So they always got something stupid to say. Instead of thinking one moment back, say, no, that makes sense. Why not help? And that's all I'm going to say about that. I'm going to recognize those who've been helping at the end. But right now, that's all I have to say about that. All right? All right. All right. <laughs> you got your sword? You got your hammer? Y'all ready to go to work? Because <laughs> I is. <laughs> no, all right. I should. I am. Anybody think I don't know how to, you know, speak the king's corrupted language? I do. But anyway, brothers and sisters, I'm going to ask you to go over to the book of Jasher. You know, this book that so many of our brothers say, oh, that ain't no real book. We, we, uh, I, we don't, we hate that book. Yeah, I know. You hate the truth, some of them, because all oh, you just don't know any better. You know, if you were with us Friday night on the Friday night Bible, Friday night, Wednesday night Bible study, we studied the book of Psalms, chapter 78. Psalms. You know the same? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, uh, Yahuwah is what it really should read, is my shepherd, I shall not want, you know, Psalm 23. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, Psalms 91. I mean, saw in Psalms chapter 1. One to put a thousand to flight, two, ten thousand to flight. I shall not be afraid of the arrows by day and, and the, or the terrors by night and the arrows by day, Psalms 91. Those same Psalms, guess what we found in there? A story. And guess what that story is about? The sons of Ephraim. Joseph's sons. And do you know they told exactly in Psalms 78 what Joseph's sons did that caused them to be in transgression before Yahuwah? And the only place you would have found that out, if you were reading Psalm 78, you would be reading, oh, the sons of Ephraim did something they shouldn't have did. And they made Yahuwah angry because they weren't being patient. They weren't waiting on Yahuwah like Isaiah 40. And 31 says, those who wait upon Yahuwah, he shall what? Renew their strength. They were in violation because they were impatient. They felt like the 180 years of, in, of, of enslavement had passed and it was time to be free. They were like Sin K and Amistad, make us free. Make <laughs> oh, I'm sorry for that. But anyway, they were trying to free themselves, but it was not the time. And they were punished. They were overwhelmed and punished harshly. Psalm 78 talks about it. But if you really wanted to understand exactly what they did, how many men, what they had, what happened to them, who was the one who, who Yah used to bring evil upon them, you would have had to go to the book of Jasher to find that information out. Not Exodus, not Numbers, Damn sure not Genesis. You would have to go to Exodus to find that out. I'm sorry, you'd have to go to Jasher to find that out. But here again, they want to tell us, you know, Jasher, somehow or another, is not a real book. Or not a canonized, a sanctioned book. And who canonizes books? Who sanctions books? The heathens. The heathens have the audacity to tell Israel what books we can read and, and what books we cannot read. And now you have Israelite overseers and I do call them overseers. You know, overseer work for the master. Telling us to obey, you know, slaves, obey those who have charge over you. But they're not Christians, though. But they're quoting Christian dogma. Telling you you can't read it. So what I say to my brothers, don't listen to them. They don't have to read it. Let them stay ignorant. 
What did Daniel say in, in chapter 12? He said, the wise would understand. But what he said, you know, the wicked would continue on their wickedness and not understand. So let them not read it. But we're going to read them. And we're going to learn from them. And we're going to strengthen ourselves from them. And then when we get strong, we're going to strengthen our brethren and our sisters. Whether they like it or not. It is what it is. So we're going to be in the book of Jasher, okay? I just want to give you just that little tidbit because, again, there's a lot of folk out there listening to other folk out there who show up once a month with a message. And they don't see that brother said this stuff and that brother had his receipts. Whatever. Go there by the channel see how many t-shirts, sweatshirts, marriage counseling he's selling. being taken advantage of but you don't want to hear that because you're too busy praying fingers at those who are not taking advantage of you so I'm going to cry out loud and I ain't going to spare not I'm going to tell you about yourself give you an opportunity hopefully to do something about it before it's too late clock ticking on you listen See that 11 seconds that just passed? A soul just left this earth. And one day, maybe your soul, while you over there playing with them, finding for who's going to tickle your ears. Now, for the rest of us, let's go. You know. <laughs> oh. I know what this is. Mm. <laughs> mm. Look it over here. Probably not gonna find it because I'm trying to find it. Hallelujah. This is for this. You, you, you take this off, you dip this in, and you put that in, and boy, your skin <laughs> and the rest of you wake up. You know, I was reading, I'm, I'm getting over to this. I'm going to get to the message, all right, brothers? This is our problem. Come on, brothers. Don't be getting all antsy, all right? Come on, dear. I'm coming. Hold on. All right. <laughs> but I was reading over in 2 Samuel, and the brothers had come, the first Samuel, and um, the men had come back from war. It was first or 2 Samuel. And Saul had put out, a, King Saul had put out a decree because they were fighting, and he wanted everybody to fast. And he told them, you know, don't do not do nothing. Just go through the fast. And let me see that if I got it marked, I'll, I'll go there. But I'm not going to, you know, it's Shabbat. I know we, we should be all be settled in today anyway. Um, but there was a big issue uh, when Saul told everybody to fast. And, you know, uh, Jonathan and, and those guys were out fighting. And when they, they were so tired and, and so famished from, you know, from the fighting, that the word didn't get back uh, to uh, Jonathan, Saul's son, that they weren't supposed to be eating anything. And uh, so on his way back, he happened to come upon, you know, some food, right? And he saw this food, and that food he saw, you know, was the food that I just, that, you know, that I just mentioned. As a matter of fact, uh, I'll read the story for you real fast. This, this is going to be in 1 Samuel chapter 14 and verse 24. Now, check this out, brothers and sisters. Now, you know, we have fun with this. You know, every now and then I have fun with this. In the Bible study, I was talking about how it enriches a man's testosterone, for lack of a better word, and how it beautifies the daughter's design and keep that little smooth, you know, soft, you know, skin. Not you, brother. Your skin should... You know, if you're working, man, you should be, well, I think you see these veins in here. Them hands should like they've been somewhere, all right? They can still be, you know, <laughs> you little, you know, moisturizer. But a man's fist needs to be, you know, you got them for a reason. Ball them up every now and then, all right? They ain't just for you to just stand there like this or like that. That's healthy, too. But every now and then, you need to be balling up that fist, brother. But let's go here. And I'm not talking about hitting nobody. I'm talking about grinding it out, doing what you got to do to make sure you're going to be okay and those that you're responsible for. And 
those who are dependent upon you. Not just in your household, your nation, your people, Yasharel, at least the righteous one tenth of us. But look what it says here. It says, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 24. Excuse me, a little sniffle. And the men of Yasharel were distressed that day, for Saul had injured the people, saying, Cursed be the man that eats any food until the evening, that I may avenge my enemy. So none of the people tasted any food. And they all in the land came and, and all they of the land came to the wood to a wood, and there was honey upon the ground. And when the people were coming to the wood, behold, the honey dro dropped, but no man put his hand to his mouth, for the people feared the oath that Saul had given. But Jonathan heard not when his father had charged the people with an oath. Wherefore he put forth the end of the rod that was in his hand, and he dipped it in a honeycomb and he put his hand to his mouth and his eyes were enlightened y'all heard that right you heard somebody saying you're not supposed to eat honey because this bee spit I want to tell them you're full of shit get away from me with that mess he said but again he said and his eyes were enlightened because I tasted a little of this honey. How much more happily the people, if they had, how much more happy the people or strong the people would have been had they eaten freely today of the spoil of their, if they had eaten freely today of the spoil of the enemies which they found. For there had not been, had, for there had not been now a much greater slaughter of the Philistines. And what he was saying, if Saul hadn't put out that stupid oat, and the people were eating, then they would have been stronger and they could have got rid of more of their enemies. But a part of that, you know, enlightenment, you know what I'm saying? What's this? Food. Okay, I can't get more particular YouTube, trust me, brother, so shadow ban the crap out of it. Well, I need you to be thumbing up and sharing it because they are not letting this information get out. They don't want you to know about that. But if you're with us on the Bible study, Zoom calls in here too. I'm going to tell you about it, but I can't get into, I can't say some of the things because again, you think they want what's in the best interest of our people? You know what that would do for their services? That they want you to come seek them from when you don't feel so good? You know how much money it would cost them? Can you say billions and billions? If you just did a little of that every day? That would cost them big time. But it sure save you a lot of money. Hmm. Money, honey. How about that? A little honeycomb will help too. All right. Excuse me, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Okay, I just had to throw that in. All right, but you can read that for yourself. First Samuel chapter 14. Start reading. You can read the whole chapter. But if you get the verse 24 down, you'll see what happened. All right, you'll see what happened. So I'm, I'm not conflating anything, and I'm sure not promoting anything other than the truth, which is my job. All our job. Tell the truth. Say, buy the truth and sell it not. All right, so let's go over to, the, to, to Joshua chapter 12. Now, we're going to be talking about, you know, our one of our great, 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 great grandfathers, Abraham. All right. And Abraham now is, 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 is in a situation where he stood up against the heathens like we're supposed to do. And we, that's what we're learning their ways. We're supposed to fight against their ways. And he stood up against the heathens. He stood up against his own father because his father was an idolater. His father was serving their version of Jesus, Baal. Ahaya, Ahaya, whatever name they given him. And he called him out for it. Matter of fact, he said, are you foolish? These things don't have no life to them. These things don't save. These things don't redeem. Then he went out there and got after the Muslims. He said, why are you over there? I'm looking at the stars. I'm looking at the moon. They don't, they don't, you know, I'm praying to the east and to the west. That ain't helping nothing either. 
Oh, he did. Go read some of the earlier chapters. Abraham wasn't no joke. See, see, if you depend on the heathens to teach you about Abraham, Abraham, all you hear about is a man that was 100 years old and had a son. And he wanted to sacrifice his son. That's about all they're going to give you over there in Genesis. And that's damn sure all they're going to be allowed to preach in the pulpit upon their altars, Baal altars, looking down upon many of who used to be us, who are still many of them. So he came out against them. He cried aloud. He didn't spare not. He lifted up his voice. And boy, he created some mayhem. Abraham was, not, that's why I say, you know, when, when David talks about in Psalms 144, the, the strength of Yahuwah teaches, you know, my hands to, you know, my, my hands to fight or my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Brothers and sisters, we don't, we're not supposed to be sitting around here passive. Docile, emasculated, and feminized. We're supposed to have some get up and go about us. We're supposed to be like David. When them heathens start saying something about Yahuwah, we're supposed to be like David when he confronted Goliath. He said, I'll be there. You filthy, uncircumcised Philistine. How dare you put your mouth on Yahuwah? See, when they start talking to us about their God, we're supposed to get, we're supposed to get anxious. <laughs> I mean, that's when the anxiety is supposed to be kicking in, not kicking in because somebody hurt your feelings. Say something you didn't want to hear or think you've been wrong. Go fast and get that right. How about that? Break that yoke on yourself. But I digress. Let's come back over here. We're supposed to have some, some, some moxie. We're supposed to be like, like, like David again. David said, I'm going to chop off that big giant big bucket head of yours and I'm going to serve it back to the, to the fowls of the air and I'm going to do it with your own sword. You know who that reminds me of? You know who, who was uh, the female um, the female version of, of, of David? Judah. For all you know these, these heathens out there female and male heathens out there Christian, non-Christians. What I mean, Christian, non-Christians, they ain't supposed to be Christians, but they still think like a Christian. Judah grabbed, you know, a king, not a king, but a, but a general's, got his sword from over his bed and severed his, severed his head to free her people. David did the same thing. They were at war. They were being threatened. Goliath had challenged the mighty of the man. He said, whoever the baddest one of y'all, send him out here. And if he can beat me, then we become y'all prisoners. But if, we, but, if, but if he can't, then all that y'all have belong to me. See, that's religion. They want to, they want to you know, to, to control and to oppress and to colonize and to dominate us. That's what religion and Christianity New Twistman is all about. Slaves, obey your masters. Obey those who have rulership over you, for this is what Christ would want you to do. But they're living high on their little filthy hog. You down here, we down here scratching for crumbs. Helping them eat high on the hog. But see, when you come into the truth and you open up this book and really, you know, sort of listening, start learning. I mean, listen to learn, to sort of being told, being to be taught. It changes you, brothers and sisters. It changes a man. It changes a woman. And that's why this is necessary. I'm going to keep this in my picture. It changes you. A true change. So she fought as hard as he fought. Is what I'm saying. So all this, this foolishness about, you know, a woman's role again. Head covered, keeping your mouth shut. You know, daughter's design. If that's who you're over there listening to, um, all I'm going to say to you, they don't know what they're talking about. 
They still got you over there. Or they'll tell you, I'm a, I'm a Hebrew Israelite. But when it comes down to you, you notice they always tell you that you ain't about crap. And I heard somebody, say, oh boy, you, what do you call me? You simping. <laughs> you know, it's easy to, 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 to <laughs> it's easy to tell a man through, through a comment that he's simping. It's easy to text a man that he's simping. But I wonder if they would come to a man face to face who they don't know. Just because that man said something and tell him to his face that he's a simp. Because he spoke the truth. Because I guarantee you, wherever they're working, there's somebody in there telling them things they don't want to hear, they don't like. And I bet you they're not telling that person that they're simping. But see, stupid is as stupid does. If I'm simping because I'm saying that women are strong and women can be helpful and women serve a purpose, and you're saying I'm not, then go tell your mama that. Why don't you go tell your mama she needs to shut up and get barefoot and put a rag on her damn head and keep her mouth shut. Because last I checked, if you came from between her legs, she's a female. Well, I just had a very filthy thought in my head, so I won't say that because... It ain't the only thing coming from between these, these women's legs anymore is, is babies. You got idiots got their heads in places that it should not be. I'll just say it like that. But I digress. Let's get back to the match to the matter at hand. But I just wanted, wanted to emphasize to everybody, look, Abraham was no joke. <laughs> So if you think he was just some old man who was known for, you know, going to kill his son because Yah told him to do that. And that showed how he was faithful and he became a friend of Yah. Brother, you don't, sister, you don't know half the story. That's why you probably need to be with us, to be honest with you. That's why channels like this is necessary because we're going to give you the story. Okay? So let's go talk about old, you know, old man. <laughs> Let's see what can we go find out what old man Abraham was doing when he wasn't so old? Let's see what he was doing with the rest of his life. He's just sitting on the curve, just waiting and waiting and waiting to become an elder. Or did he earn his stripes to be one who was considered a friend of Yahuwah? How did that happen for him? What did he do to get such a wonderful title? Accolade. About to find out. <laughs> well, let's get to work. The book of Jasher, chapter 12. And when the king heard the words of Abram, he ordered him to be put into prison. And Abram was put in jail for 10 days. So for some of you brothers who coming out of jail and some of you who may still be in jail, that ain't the worst thing that can happen to you if you're in there, you know, for unjust reasons. But standing up for yourself, standing up for what was right. That ain't the worst. That, don't let nobody label you. Tell you. Sisters, you too. Don't let nobody put that on you. All right? Even if you were wrong, you can repent. That's what seven, Chronicles 7 and 14 is about. That was yesterday's show up message about. You can repent. Don't let nobody tell you, oh, you, you are no good and you're done and you ain't nothing but a convict. Well, Abraham was a convict. Not what they got to say. And so was Moses. So was David. So was Joseph. So was Dr. King. So was Malcolm X. I don't know how far we need to go with this. It's not what happens to you. It's how you respond to what happens to you. Verse 2. And at the end of those days, the king ordered that all the princes and the governors of the different provinces and all the sages should come before him and they sat before him and Abraham was still in the house of confinement. Now a sage ain't nothing but a little sorcerer, a little, they really called them advisors, but they were the ones who were reading the stars, the horoscopes, the astrologers. Just like those who are in the church right now. That's why they have on their little gowns. That's why they have their little men up on behind the pulpit. Like you see over there with Geno, Geno, Geno Jennings and them demons. Yeah, hollering out loud. He's running off at his big stupid mouth saying nothing. Everybody's impressed. 
I like Gino Gino because Gino Gino keep it real. Gino Gino is an agent of the state. I heard this man, you know, everything that you can hear coming out of the, the, the Biden administration mouth, if you listen carefully, you'll hear Gino Jennings talking about it. Because he seems to be the all-star now. He's the preacher who's supposed to have the goods. So since we everybody want to be pointing fingers at people, then I'm just telling you. This guy heard this guy say, homosexuals are welcome in my church. How they gonna change unless they come to my church? See, that's a good, clever way of embracing it, brothers and sisters. And a whole bunch of other stupidity. And everybody sitting, you notice ain't nobody have their books open in that church. You, you noticing that? Ain't nobody sitting in there following along studying because he ain't gonna let you study because he bounced off, he's hopping all over the place. He remind me of that old. You know that little saying, he's like a gnat on crack. A gnat on crack. It's everywhere. Go here, brother. Go over here. Now, now go here, brother. Go here. Am I all right? Now go over here. Go over here. Other people are like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, when they walk out that church, they say, hey, um, I know y'all were in there for three hours, so uh, tell us about the message. What did, what did, what did, uh, Overseer talk about today. What message did Master give to him for you? You know, 501c3 faith based initiative, that whole thing. And I guarantee we're gonna walk out there, uh, you know, he I don't even remember. It's not that you don't remember, he just didn't teach you anything. He just told you about this and told you about that. Called some women hoes and some men homosexuals and told some other men they need to get a job. And like little baby seals, everybody, can I get a fish? Not it. He ain't the only one. Doctrines of devils. And he's all in the New Testament. So all of you folk over there listening to him thought you weren't a Christian. Just asking for a friend. Let's get on here. Verse 3. And the king said to the princes and the, princes and the sages, Have you heard what Abraham the son of Terak has done to his father? <laughs> Now, you know what he's talking about? Because Abraham went in there, Abram, before he was called Abram. Abram, same Abraham. They just called him Abram before he became Abraham. He went to his father's house, and his father was an idolater, and he had all kind of, you know, artifacts in his house. Idolatrous artifacts, sorcery in his house, all through his house. Brother Mendez was talking about that uh, on the call. Several of them, Brother Mendez in particular was talking about that, and he was talking about this little Buddha thing he found in a move that he was assisting with and how he got rid of it. But Abraham's father house was full of that kind of stuff. And he told Abraham, this is why I'm getting all my blessings. See, Jesus blessed. Y'all just don't understand. Look at all this stuff I got. And the question nobody ever asked, well, how did you get it? Did Jesus just drop it out the sky like manna? Or you've been working for 50 years, Dad, and you can't even stand up because your knees hurt because you've been busting concrete for the construction company. And your pension paying, okay. But you say Jesus gave it to you. That's interesting. But anyway, let's get on back here. And he says here, and the king said, to the princes and the sages, have you heard what Abraham, the son of Terak, has done to his father? Thus has he, thus this has he done to him. And I ordered him to be brought before me. He talks about how he destroyed all those thoughts, that, that idolatry that was in his house. And thus has he spoken. His heart did not misgive him. Neither did he stare in my presence. Oh, behold now, and he is confined from confined in the prison. Oh, he said, you know, I called that joker before me. He's talking about Abraham. And you know, he did not repent. 
Did you know he said he didn't say he was he was not contrite? Can you believe that? That he's bold enough to stand up against the devils and, and the head of the devils, the pastor, and tell the pastor, I don't believe that, that foolishness. I don't believe in no New Testament. I only have one Allah, Yahuwah, and I only have one Savior. Oh, by the way, Allah, Yahuwah. Isaiah 43 talks about that. 45, 47. <laughs> we can go on and on with that, but, you know. I don't know how you can read Psalm 23 when it starts, Yahuwah is my shepherd. So Yahuwah is your shepherd and Jesus is your shepherd. But yet, the book clearly tells us you can't serve two masters. How long will you be between two opinions? I'm just here to help. Don't get mad. Let's continue on here. He said, this guy didn't have... He wasn't even sorry. He did all this stuff. And then when I called him in front of me, he was bold enough to stand on it. That's what the king is saying. He said, I'll be there. He said, you know what? I put this joke in jail. I called him and asked him, did you do this stuff? Did you destroy this stuff? Did you walk away from Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism? And he had the audacity to tell me, you're damn right I did. And I don't care what you, whether you like it or not. That's Abraham. That's Abraham showing up and showing out as a young man. He wasn't 100 years old or 90 years old when this was going on, or 85. He was a lot younger than that. Let's go on here. It says here, verse 5. And they all answered the king, saying, the man who disrespect the king should be hanged on a tree. Well, you heard that before. Hanged on a tree. How interesting. Hanged on a tree. Does that sound familiar, brothers and sisters? Can y'all think of any other people that whenever we are in conflict, with enemies who have us surrounded, like Psalms 83 talks about. Brother Benjamin brought that up last night. Praise Yahuwah for the brother. Do you notice that lynching? <laughs> That's what hanging on a tree is, lynching. You know, kind of, you want to, this is what they wanted to do to Brother Abraham, just for the record. No sanctuary for Israel. They say he had the audacity, he should be hanged on a tree. But having done all these things that he said, and having despised our Elohim, see, there's more than one Elohim out here, brothers and sisters. People, we know it's all the same. No, that's a lie. Because here's another Elohim. This king said, no, he despised our Elohim, the church, religion, their Elohim. Church, many of us was a part of serving their Elohim. And yes, Jesus is one of their Elohims. Or Yahushua, whatever name you want to call him. Still the same one. He said, hanging ain't good enough. Look what he said. I'm serious, brother. This is what it's... <laughs> Look. He said, hanging is not good enough. I'm going to show you something here. He said, hanging ain't good enough. He, therefore, he must be burned to death. Oh, yeah. That's what I said. That's what they said. Oh, yeah. Sisters, daughters, mothers, y'all know the drill. If you can't stand, you know, to see the truth, then you might want to turn your head for just a moment. And by the way, sisters, see that woman with that dress on right there? Just so you know, you ain't going to be spared when he's heathen. So all you heathen lovers, See them white men on that bridge? You see that, that sister under that bridge? Swinging in the wind? Just so you let you know who you love so much, you trust so much. You're that group of y'all. But I want to show you something else. They want to burn the brother up. 
See this brother right here? You can't, it's not a clear picture, but I want you to see it. See that smoke coming off of him? Look at, you see how charred those legs are? Oh, you see who's doing it, huh? You see the woman with the dress on? Miss Ann? You see her brethren? The Edomites? What did, what did the book say? The Ethiopian can't change his skin, nor can a leopard change his, 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 his spots. Better not forget that about them folk. As they did then, as they do now. And they're going to do it again. Therefore, he must be burned to death. <laughs> but this is the law in this matter. And if it pleases the king to do this, let, let him order his servants to kindle a fire both day and night in your brick furnace, then, and then will we cast this man into it. And the king did so, and he commanded his servants that they should prepare a fire for three days and three nights. Why they love that three days and three night heathen foolishness, huh? Who was in the grave for three days and three nights? To set the captives free. See, brothers and sisters, there's a lot of lies being told out here, and we would never know these lies unless we, unless, at least we're in this book. But the fire was set for three days and three nights. And, and he and his servants that they should prepare fire again three days and three nights in the king's furnace so that in casting the king ordered that they take Abraham from prison and bring him out to be burned. Set his butt on fire. And all the king's servants and princes and lords and governors and judges and all the inhabitants, all the people as you just saw, they were all good with it. They stood opposite of the furnace to see Abraham burning. And you don't know we're Israel yet. You don't know this book is written about us yet. Israel, I'm talking to you now. Heathens, we don't care about what you think. Two-thirds heathens, yes. The rest of you heathens, go kick rocks. You don't like what I'm saying. I don't give a damn what you think. <laughs> But you don't think we're the people of the book Israel? Their behavior, they know we are. That's why they treat us the same way as it was then, as it is now. It's strange, their children didn't forget. Although they were children. Oh, no, that was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, right. Nothing changed for them devils. And Abraham, they, they were hanging and burning us. And then our mamas, if your, if your parents, really, if you're my age, they were hanging and burning us. They still do. They never stop. Again, Ethiopia don't change the spot. Not the leopard. The Ethiopian, uh, Ethiopian cannot change the color of his skin, nor can a leopard change the spot. I want to say that's Ezekiel uh, 13 and 23 or 23 and 13. Which one of it is doesn't really matter, but it's a, it is a proverb. It's a truism. It's a, it's a reminder to us. They don't change. They don't change. They see don't change. So all of you who want to be bedfellows with them, just, just a warning to you. The day will come when the uprising happens, when this war comes and it's coming. Just remember who got you covered. Let's go on here. And all the, king, all the kings, servants, princes, lords, governors, judges, and all the inhabitants of the land, about 900,000 of them stood opposite of the furnace. Almost, almost a million people stood there to see this man get slaughtered. At least they were hoping that he would. And that's the way they feel about us today. They, they're waiting for the day. They're waiting for the strike. They, I'm talking about the EMP. They're waiting for the power grids to go down. They're waiting, you know, for, for, you know, for the government to break down. You know, those some bad boy, bad boy. What you going to do? Bad boy, bad boy. They're coming for you. Israel. That's why we're telling y'all, telling us we better get on out of these places. Because I'm going to tell you, when they go down, they're coming. They're itching for a fight, so to speak. And if nothing's new under the sun, that means you're going to be the target again. We're going to be the target again. 
Because I know many of our brothers don't want to believe that. Don't believe it. You saw what they did to that sister from that bridge. Just remind, just remember that, Candace Owens. And all the rest of you, Candace Owens. You know, she can choose who she wants to love. Okay, go ahead. It's your bad self. So who she chooses, she better hope the rest of them heathens who he's affiliated with are approval. And he ain't gonna have their approval. Trust me on that. But you'll find out. Or they'll find out the hard way. But almost a million men and women, and all the women and the little ones crowded upon the roofs and the towers to see what, what, what they were doing to Abram. And again, I got his brothers and sisters. Look, we're reading in the book, and these heathens created a book, a record of the same thing. This book is, the name of this book is called Without Sanctuary. I paid about $100 for this book. And it's just, a, it's, it's photographs of what these heathens did in the 1900s. You were born in 1900, you were born in 1997, 1999, 1925, 1959, 1963, 1965. All that happened in the century that you were born. I'm talking about, that's in this book. The same thing that was happening to our people in this book. Same thing. But everybody want to tell us, oh no, brother, you in the past. Okay, look at this. Look at all these people, men, women, look at them, all over the place. And what are they looking at? Mr. Being burned on the tree over here, him. That's what all of them are looking at, they're looking at him. And by the way, you see he's stripped naked, right? But look at them. Anybody look like they're crying? Anybody look like they're sad or upset about it? Huh? Anybody? Huh? They're all dressed up. Got their Sunday suits on. Got their hats on. Look at them. Look at him. And he got his, his suit on. Right? Look at him. Look at this. And this who you think loves you. Some of our people. Man, <laughs> woman, you've been warned. No, brother, I don't look. You've been warned. My job is to warn you. You've been warned. Same thing happened there, thousand years later. But they're gonna tell you they're not like their ancestors. Well, according to this book, they are liars. What, it, what, it, what is the proverb that says, from the wicked comes wickedness? Isn't that what they say with Murdon, who was the son of Nimrod? They say he's just like his wicked father. They're just like their wicked fathers. And many of us are, are, are walking in the ignorance of our wicked fathers by saying, oh, bro, you know, it's, it's about, you know, things have changed. It ain't the same. You really. It doesn't matter what you believe, just as long as you believe in something. That's a lie. You, you know, you don't choose who you love. That's another big giant lie. Well, you got to honor the covenant because you made a covenant. That's another big fat lie. Books tell us that we don't make no covenants with no heathens. That Yah say, make not covenants with the nations around. You know what that means? There's no covenants with them. That Yah respects anyway. You can respect it if you want to, but Yah say don't do it. So if that means you made a covenant with them, Yah is not recognizing your covenant. So the consequences will be severe for violating his commandments. Just so you know, all you so-called, you know, non-covenant breakers that you made with the heathens. Oh, I'm conflating this? We'll be back. Come on. Let's go to do the road of Deuteronomy. Y'all, I want y'all to share this video. Because I heard some of these content creators, you know, make this covenant. Well, I made a covenant, and I, you know, y'all say we don't break no covenants, so I'm keeping my covenant. What he says here, when you come in the land which you, you, with the, which you, your whore gives you, you shall not learn to do after the abominations of those nations, right? 
None of it. None of their covenants we are supposed to keep. Or, you know, as, as the word go, uh, learn to do after their behaviors. But they want to tell us, oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It does matter. See, we don't make no covenants with no heathens that Yah is going to recognize. Let's get on back over here. I, I will never get done. Because there's actually in the book, and I, I thought it was there, but it isn't right there. The exact word, he says, make no covenant. So one of you, my brothers and sisters, Brother Roderick, I know you, my brothers are very scholarly. If you can find that verse where he says, make no covenant with the heathens, put that, you know, in, in the comment section for my brothers and sisters so they know that your brother is not conflating this truth here. If I can find it later, I'll put it there myself. But if you can before me, brother, I'd appreciate it. Let's continue on here. All the women and all the little crowd, all of them crowded around, as you just saw in the picture, upon roofs and towels to see what they were doing to Abram. And they all stood together at a distance, and there was not left one man that did not come on that day to behold the scene. And when Abraham came, the conjurers of the king and the sages saw Abram, and they cried out to the king, saying, Our sovereign Lord, surely this is the man whom we know to have been the child at the, whose birth the great star swallowed the four stars, which declared to the king now 50 years since. Is that not the same lie they tell about their sweet Jesus, that this star showed the birth of this child who was going to take down Herod's kingdom? You see, when in, in 1 Maccabees 3 and 48, where it says the heathens, sought to put their image and likeness in our Torah. And that's why I, I, you've heard us say, it's a, twistament, it's a testament of lies, twisting truths, stealing truths, putting them in their book and coming up with a new covenant, a new promise. That's why we got to expose them. That's why we got to cry aloud. Warn our brothers and sisters. Tell them that the fix has been in for generations. And now Yah is waking up, Yashriel, at least a remnant, a remnant of us. The drums are beating. The trumpet is sounding. The clock is ticking. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us continue. He says, And the great star swallowed up the four stars, in which we declare to the king now fifty years since. And now, behold, his father has also transgressed your command. So all of those who are selling us out for the heathens, your day, all of those of you who are selling us out, let me say it that way, for the heathens, your day coming. All of those who want to talk about, I don't care what you say, brother. It's the lamb for me. Jesus is my savior. I don't care what you say. You are a heathen. You're a demagogue. Your day coming. Your day coming. He said, learn not the ways of those heathens and you over there practicing the same thing that they're practicing. How is that a not a learned way? And don't tell me you came up unless you wrote that New Testament. You are learning their ways. The book is their ways. The book tells you to put a rag on your head if you're a female and keep your mouth shut. And if you're a man, it tells you to be a good nigga, a good slave. Obey your master. And if you ain't a slave, then obey those who have ruled over you. Because that's what, you, you know, Yahuwah put them there. That's a lie. Our book clearly tells us, Deuteronomy 17 and 15, we don't put nobody over us that are not of our brother, Yasharel. Because they put it over in the New Testament lies, you want to believe that over the Yah's Torah, which never changes. Because he doesn't change. We'll get there in a moment. Let's go on here. And now, and now behold, his father has also transgressed your commands and mock you by bringing another child, which you did kill. And when the king heard their words, he was exceedingly angry, and he ordered Tarak to be brought before him. This is Abraham's father. And the king said, have you heard what the conjurers have said? See, this is why a lot of our brothers and sisters are in that occult. They know it's true over there. See, they, them demons be talking to them. 
Why you think they fight for those occultic books? Why you think they want them occultic books? Because they're making covenants with those, with those, with those, with the demons in them books. That's how they get in their knowledge. That's how they're getting their learnings, their information. That's why they'll fight to keep them. Anybody. And that's why you should make sure none of that stuff is in your home. Now, anywhere you go, voluntarily. So if you're going to a place, a so-called beauty salon, and you see a little boot in there, you should not be in there. If you're going into, you know, eating the heathen, you know, food, if you like their food, and you see a little Buddha somewhere in there, or some other little god or goddess in there, East Indian goddess, Shiva, anything like that, you should not be in there. You shouldn't be buying their products that they pray over and stick it in your head and on your face. Talking about where it can get into your skin, to get into your body. Either ingesting it or tying it into yourself. Why many of us are sick. I don't even know it. Because we're doing accursed things. So all the curses in Deuteronomy 28 are happening. Because nobody is talking about this stuff. Except a few of us. Better say it, I know I am. I'm not going to speak for the rest. I'm speaking for me. I'm talking about it. And I'm going to keep on talking about it. Until y'all shut me up. And the way these heathens passing laws and stuff, <laughs> sooner or later they're going to cut this stuff off anyway. So get it in your heart now, brothers. Get sisters, get it while you can get it. I'm talking about the truth. Let's go on here. The heaven the conjure said this. Now tell me truly, how did how did you and if you and if you shall speak true, you shall be acquitted. <laughs> Let me say if you tell on everybody, I'm gonna let you go. We know that story, don't we, brothers and sisters? We call them rats. And seeing that the king's anger was so much hot, Tarak said the, to the king, My lord and king, you have heard the truth, and what the sages have spoken is right. See, now they're promoting heathenism. Do what you want. You can do whatever you want. Do as thy will. It's all the same. It's just love. Love is love. See this? All that is not all that stuff you hear today, brothers and sisters. That's old stuff. Betraying each other. That's what a Jason Whitlock and all of them. Lathing up the heathens, telling them, don't have no white guilt. Don't let them make you feel guilty because your parents was a racist. Seriously? He's telling them, don't let us make them feel guilty. Because they were raised by racists. And now they're racists. But no charge. Don't be charged. Don't let them charge you. But one of us, as much as think about doing something against one of them, we ain't nothing but, what did Clinton say? A bunch of, what she call us? Super predators, to be exact. Oh, and what did Donald Trump say? Same thing. Left, right, two tits on the same damn cow. With all you think you need to be voting for truth and voting for your freedom, the lesser evil. Keep on wasting your time. Yo, they call it, I don't know, they think they vote on Tuesdays. Or maybe we need to have a Tuesday Bible <laughs> Stuff you can just be with us, but wasting your time over there. These over here, stuff will change you over there. Nothing gonna change. Now we stand on Wednesday. Verse 13. And seeing that the king anger was so much akin to, okay, verse 14. I'm sorry, I'm still in, yes, 13. And my lord, the king, have you heard the truth? He said, you have heard the truth. Now he's ratting. And what the sages have, talking about Abraham's dad telling on everybody. Has he spoken his right? And the king said, how, how could you do this thing? I thought you were a good house, Negro. Jesse Lee. <laughs> Candace. Jason. 
Charles Dow. Thought y'all were good Negroes. I thought y'all says it don't really matter. Just believe in Jesus. <laughs> it ain't funny. Just calling it out. Thomas Sewell. Larry Elder. Hmm? He said, to, he said, to take, to transgress my orders and give me a child that you did not beget and to take value for him. That's what he said. You gave me the eye for Abram. You give me somebody else's child and you took the money I gave you for that child. That's your preachers for you. Sell you out for a buck. Sell you out for, you know, what do they call that? 501c tax exempt. So you're right on down the river. The river now, where the alligators are, making you gator bait. Don't you submit to the heathens. The good ones. <laughs> That's an oxymoron, a good heathen. And Tarak answered the king and said, Because my tender feelings were excited for my son, and at that time I took my son from my handmaid, and I brought him to the king. And the king said, Who advised you to do this? Then now the king will say, You tell, tell me more. <laughs> and I want to see if there's anybody else involved in this. I'm going to get all you. I'm going to get every last one of y'all. He's going to tell on all y'all. Right, Tatasi 6 9, and <laughs> whatever his name is, right? Tell on everybody. So he can go free. And the king who advised you to do this, who was the king who advised? And the king said, who told you to do this? Tell me and do not hide from me and then you shall not die. And Tarak was greatly kept afraid of the king in front of the king. And he said to the king, it was Heron, my eldest son, who advised me to do this. This man lied on his own child. To save his own behind. And some of my brothers and sisters, this is a lesson that you need to keep in your heart. There are going to be people in your own house that are going to betray you, you know, when SH, when shit hits the fan. I ain't got no time to be trying to abbreviate nothing. I want my thoughts to be here. I don't know how to be political correct. You get offended, stay offended. I don't care. Grow up. Act like an adult. But anyway, he's scared. Now he's ratting on his own child. He ain't ratting on him, he's lying on him. Many of us are going to get lied on too, brother and sister, for the stance that we're taking for this truth. Oh, they racist. We ain't racist nothing. Well, I can't say that. But to be racist, you have to have, you know, control over money and power and influence. And I don't see that going on here with us. We can, you got to be able to deprive somebody of something they want. And mass is not one person. So maybe a little prejudice, a little bias, bigoted, but racism, you got to have money, power, and influence. <laughs> I know some of you want to be racist, but <laughs> you don't qualify. If Oprah and Michael don't qualify, you don't qualify either. Okay? Can't buy me love. You know. <laughs> I don't know, right? Your money can't buy you love. Even the Beatles knew that. Verse 17. But Haran did not advise his father to do anything for Terah. But, did, did, but Haran did not advise his father to do anything. Isn't this something? Straight out turning out to be a coward. He said Terran, Terak, Heron did not advise his father to do anything. But Terak said to for Terak said this to the king in order to deliver his own soul from the king. For he feared greatly, and the king said to Terak, Heron, your son who advised you to do this shall die through the fire with Avram. So, brothers and sisters, I'm saying you don't have to be guilty to be persecuted. 
And that's another issue. Well, if you know if you don't do nothing wrong, you ain't have anything to worry about. Really? Where you get that from? The melanin in your skin is enough to make you guilty, sister. Brother. And that power that exudes from you because you're Yasharel, that can get you killed. But all the nations, including the dark-skinned nations, hate you. Maybe individuals, maybe not, but collective, group collective, oh yeah. Goes on to say here, and the king, he was greatly terrified in, in, in Heron, and in, whole, and in those days, that Abraham was born was 32 years old. So they were young people. But Haran did not advise his father to do anything. For Terah said this to keep his to save his own life. And many will betray us, brothers and sisters, to save their own lives. Don't forget that. In your own houses. And Haran, your son. Okay, we read that already. Verse 18. And Haran at that time felt inclined to follow the ways of Abraham. But he kept it within himself. See, there's a lot of those people who know we're right, but they're scared to say it. They're scared they're going to get cut off from access to things, money, power, influence, safety. You got a lot of in Israel who are, who are in covenants with heathens because it's convenient for them. And they think that somehow y'all going to change for them because of their reasoning, because they're inclined to do what they want to do. They're inclined to say, well, it all depends. You don't understand my situation. Yahuwah does not understand your situation. That's interesting. Yes, he does. And let me make say this clear to brothers and sisters. You've no respect to a person. Your situation is your situation. And what you do about that situation will, you know, determine ultimately what's going to happen to you. Whether you here or and after when you leave here. So somebody got to say these inconvenient truths. So I'm going to say it. But Heron did not advise his father to do anything. We just read that. But verse 18, And Heron at that time felt inclined to follow the ways of Abram, but he kept it within himself. And Heron said in his heart, Behold, now the king has seized Abram on account of these things which Abram did. And it shall come to pass that if Abraham prevail over the king, I will follow him. But if the king prevail over, over Abraham, I'm going to follow the king. So this is that two opinion thing. I'm a Christian, but I'm not a Christian. I'm a, I'm not a Christian, but I believe in the Christian t in the tenet and in, in the tenets of Christianity. That means all the New Testament. Can you guys see the contradiction here? I hope you can. I hope this is being becoming crystal clear, and not to you, my brothers and sisters, who are in the. I'm talking about those who are teaching this other truth that. You can be an Israelite, you can serve Yahuwah, but you can also partake in their unforbidden fruit. As well as their unforbidding lies and words and teachings and covenants and testament. Twistaments, better say it. See, this message is for that group. This message is for you if you fit in that category. Thinking that it's okay to, to, to you know, to mix it. To, to, you know what I'm saying? To blend it all together. Because you're inclined to. Not because you're right. It's just because you inclined to. You see it beneficial for you. And then when we come out and say something, then you got every excuse under the sun not to listen. Just a warning. When you, I'm, truth be told, many are going to make the same decision that 
hair on my head here. Well, it depends. You make everything nice and good for me, I'll come. But if I got to be inconvenienced, I, incl I feel inclined to stay where I am. To shit is the pain. Then it's going to be too late. Because it's about to get too late for Heron in a moment. Check this out, brothers and sisters. And when Terak had spoken this to the king concerning Heron, his son, then the king ordered Heron to be seized. Excuse me. In 1 Kings chapter 18 and 21, is where you'll see this double-minded behavior where Elijah is talking to Israel. How long will y'all be between two opinions? You can't serve two masters. You can't have two Elohim. You can't have two saviors. You can't have two redeemers. It's either one or the other. When you say two, you've already chosen the other. When you like Heron, depends. Whichever is easiest. Mm. Heron about to find out the hard way. That he should have had some conviction. Double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Or her ways. But he can't be a part of nothing for long. They just go from place to place like a vagabond. And they're always the victim. You can believe that. Like clockwork. They don't love me. They don't want me to be a part of their community. Why? Because we told him the truth or her the truth. Well, keep on rejecting the truth because you're not inclined to believe. There's another fire waiting for you. Verse 21, and they brought Abram and Heron his brother, and they cast them into the fire, and all the inhabitants of the land, and all the king's servants, and the princes, and all the women and the little ones were there standing that day over them, just watching, nobody doing nothing to stop it. So all of you folk who think, you know, your will, will, your will force going to come and save you. Remember the movie Amazing Grace? He ain't coming. Your Jesus ain't coming. Just so you know. Or whatever name you calling him now. The black one that turned white that turned back black allegedly. He ain't coming for you. Just so you know. Somebody better tell you. Ain't no rapture and ain't no nothing coming from the sky from you for your behind. Just remember when it happens. You, I just want you to remember when it happens. You're going to say, man, I should DFG. I should have listened. He did tell me. So I'm telling you, nothing, nobody's coming for you. It's all lies. I know you're disappointed. I know you're angry. I know you're hurt. I know you need some, <laughs> some wheat, some sweet tea, you know, and, and some Tylenol in a pillow. <laughs> but you'll be all right. If you accept it, then ain't nobody coming and you got to do something yourself. And that's something you have to do is turn back to Yahuwah and serve him and him only and be happy about it. Come on, let's go. Let me see something here. Hallelujah. Well, I can tell you one thing, brothers and sisters, this is going to be a two-part. Not today. We're going to finish this up on the Bible study uh, Wednesday night, y'all willing? But we're going to read on a little bit further. We're not done yet, but we're not going to finish this chapter. This, oh no, it's a whole lot of meat, and I refuse to rush through it. Hallelujah. Let's go on here. So here's, here's Haram. Well, I don't, we'll see. We're depending on what happens. If Abraham win, I'm going to stay over there. So if the Israelites are right, I'm going to be an Israelite. But if the Christians are right, I'm going to be a Christian. Or I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to be smart. I'm going to be an Israelite Christian. But I'm not going to call myself a Christian. But I'm going to practice what they practice. I'm going to teach what they teach. I'm going to believe what they believe. All right, Heron. Let's see how this is going to work out for you. Here's something for you, guy, gals. All right. And they cast them into the fire. Hmm, nothing new on there. And when they brought them both, this is verse 21. 
And when they brought them both, Abram and Haran, his brother, they cast them into the fire. And all the people just stood there and watched. Women, children, men, all of them. Nobody gave a damn. They just sit there and like, mmm, barbecue. And the king's servant took Abram and his brother, and they stripped them of all their clothes, as we saw the brother naked on, in the book. Stripped them of all their garments, except their lower stuff. They just left something stay around their waist. I can show you a picture of that, but I won't. I know you don't want to see it anyway. But they left the lower garment on them. You know, I kind of feel like old uh, Red and 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 uh, Shawshank Redemption. When when what's the name? Uh, the foe told him, "You came this way, you might as well come the rest of the way." So you know what? Here it is that he took all their clothes off of them before they were about to kill them, right? Burn them, except for their lower garment. Again, daughters of Zion. Those of you who just can't stand to see what the heathens will do to your brother and your sisters. Just want to give you an idea of what that looks like, okay? Just so you say, well, what did that look like? They left their undergarments on there. Now, this picture is brutal, so I'm going to tell you, I'm going to forewarn you, okay? So you might want to turn your head. But that's what that looks like. See the undergarment? He's naked. See that? Oh, you see who's around him doing it, huh? You see, you want to know what all the kings and the princes and the rest of the heathens look like? There you go. It's a good picture of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Him too. I know he told you he ain't like the rest of them. You wait and see. Wait till shit hits the fan. Let's go on here. He says here, and they brought him both, Abram and Haran, his brother, and they cast him into the fire and all the inhabitants of the land, the king's servants. Verse 22. And the king took Abram and his brother and they stripped them of all their clothes except in their lower garments which were upon them. And they bound their hands and their feet with linen cords, as you saw. And the servants of the king lifted them up and threw them both into the fire. And Yahuwah loved Abram, and he had compassion over him. And Yahuwah came down, and he delivered Abram from the fire, and he was not burned. No weapon formed against us shall pry. That's Isaiah 54 and 17, brothers and sisters. Now you notice they got cast in the fire. And I have to say that because a lot of our brothers say, well, I know, brother, no, ain't nothing going to happen to me. Y'all got me. Yeah, but he going to cast your ass in that fire. So you better make sure you got this right. Because see, some of us, when we say that no weapon uh, uh, formed against me going to prosper, you think that you're going to be left alone. Nobody's going to bother you. The death angel is just going to pass over your door. I know what you're thinking. No, he's not. No, he's not. He's going to come right through the roof and stick his hand right in and unlock that door and let it in. He's going to find out what you're all about. He's going to see if you're really going to stand on your truth. Abraham had to stand on this truth. He had to go in that fire. You ready? Just saying for all you talking about, you know, Jesus got me or Yah got me. And I'm, I'm not calling that part into question. I'm asking you, do you understand that you're going to be tested for that conviction? And are you ready for that? Because if you're not, you need to get ready. It's coming. And it's coming to your door. Nobody going to escape. Abraham didn't get to Abraham didn't get a chance to walk away from this. Y'all didn't say, "Oh no, I love him, so he ain't going to be thrown in nobody's fire." No, just the opposite. I love him and I'm going to throw him in the fire. Cuz now we're going to find out how much he loves me back. See, a lot of you of us, y'all is, is putting you in these uncomfortable situations and you and you're showing who, you know, you're showing that old saying on, you know, you got your Sunday dress on, but your slip is showing. The y'all putting a lot of us in the fire and, and and a lot of us are running. Oh no, 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 not me. I ain't I don't want to be inconvenienced. Now. I, no, 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 no. I ain't giving up nothing. No, 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 no. I ain't got nothing but just me. I can't help you, brother. Ask somebody else. Y'all know the drill. Y'all know them kind. Some of us were them kind. Well, I never was. But many I have been. Still are. And I know no weapon for me. No weapon is going to prosper against you if you're standing for this truth. But you're going to have to prove it. 
Not just with your words. Y'all ain't interested in, in, your, in your sweet words, your conviction, your words of profession, your words of proclamation, your word of affirmation. No, he's going to test your heart. He's going to see if you got heart. He's going to test your courage. And brothers and sisters, if you don't have it all the way through you, you're going you gonna to burn. And you can't have it all the way through you unless you out here fighting this fight with the rest of us. Isolating yourself and running off because somebody made you mad and you already showing you ain't got it. You don't have it. You, you're not ready for the fight. So when the fight starts, you run. You, ain't, you don't have this. You can get it, but you don't have it. I said you can get it, but you do not have If you're running... When the heat gets turned up, you ain't got this. You don't have this. Y'all didn't say you ain't going to keep you out the fire. Where you read that at? He said, while you in the fire, I'll be there with you. If your heart is clean, and you're obedient. And you're keeping my law, statutes, and my commandments. And then I'm going to be there with you. Is that not what, what Isaiah 40? Look, let's go over there. I'm coming right back here. So we're not going to be able to finish all the 12 anyway. And like I say, part two is going to be on the Bible study Wednesday night. Well, let's look at this fire thing again. Go to Isaiah chapter 43. Look what it says here, brothers and sisters. I'm going to start reading that verse 1. But now says Yahuwah that created you, O Jacob, and he that formed you, O Yasharel. So he ain't formed the rest of them, so I don't know who created them. To them heathen that were standing around that tree, those who were throwing people in fires and hanging folk, I don't know who created them. You, they, you let the heathen tell you, Yah created everybody. That's not what he said here. I don't know how y'all reading. Y'all just conveniently skipping over things because they, un how you say, com what is cognitive dissonance? Convenient lies for uncomfortable truth. You don't want this uncomfortable, you don't want the uncomfortable truth. So you just incline yourself to believe these lies because then it, because it requires nothing of you. So you got to, you got to prove the truth. Truth has to be proved. The truth goes through the fire and it gets refined by the fire. Ezekiel, Zechariah 13 and 8 says that they go through the fire and they're refined like gold and refined like silver. Abraham over here is fulfilling Zechariah 13 and 8. Y'all see the connectivity now? You see how the precepts all tie in? You wonder who's talking to me now? Now are you questioning me now? Because I bet you didn't see that coming, did you? You probably didn't see this coming. Watch this. He said, but verse 1 again, Isaiah 43. But now thus says you who that created you, O Jacob, and that formed you, O Yasharel. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you, you, Yasharel, Israel. I have called you by your name. That's why you shouldn't be identifying but nothing but as an Israelite. Not a Hebrew Israelite, a black Hebrew Israelite, an African American, a Negro, an African, or whatever other titles. An American? Goodness gracious. How an uh, uh, Israelite can call himself or herself an American when it's clearly stated in this particular book, the great American documents that your butt is two-thirds of a three... Three-fifths three of a human being. Like cattle. But you're proud to be an American. At least I know I'm free. Stand up. Yeah, right. More like you're upside down in your thinking. Hallelujah. Somebody got to say it. So, okay, throw stones at me. That makes you feel better about yourself. Still ain't going to change the truth. Verse 2. This is where I was heading. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Noah, remember. And truth are, are our brothers and sisters coming out of Egypt. When he split the sea 12 ways. For each tribe. 
He said, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Or through the rivers. The river Jordan, when, when, when Joshua and our people went through Jordan to go into the land of Canaan to inherit the promise. And you shall, and it shall not overflow you. And when you walk through this one right here, when you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle you. Did y'all get that? Did y'all get that? Did y'all? See, all of us said, he's my savior, he's my redeemer. But did you get that part when you go through the fire? Because you're going through the fire. Abraham had to go through the fire, and yeah, you going through the fire, we going through the fire too. But if we're serving the one sovereign, Yahuwah Elohim, as verse 10 says, you are my witnesses, my servants who I have chosen that you know and believe and understand that I am he. Before me there is no El form, no other Elohim for Israel, neither shall there be after me. I am Yahuwah, and besides me there is no Savior. I have declared, and I have saved, and I have shown, and there is no strange, and let there be no strange Elohim among you. That includes a Lua or Hua, well, not a Lua, but the, uh, uh, you know what? The one they, the new name they give to, you know, their Jesus. Ahawa. Ahawa Sha. That's a strange Elohim. So you serving that one, you want to hear this one. Let's go. They bound it back to, back to Joshua 12 and 23. And they bound their hands and their feet with linen cards. And the servants and the king lifted them up and cast them both into the fire. And Yahuwah loved Abram and he had compassion over him. This is the same Abram that got rid of all those idols, got rid of all that idolatry, called his father out and was bold enough to say, those gods are not gods. We only have to, we have to serve the one sovereign, Yahuwah Elohim. That's why he loved him. And he was bold. And he was proactive. He took a hammer. He started breaking things. He didn't just sit there and say, I'm against it and y'all should know that. No, he took action. Y'all's not interested in docile, inactive, passive. Infeminate. Delicate. Men or women, I might add. You know what I'm saying? You got to put your money where your mouth is or you ain't said a damn thing. That applies to this. You got to put your words into action. If you expect Yah to love you back. Abraham did. And if Yah's no respective person and that's what it requires for you to be loved, then guess what? That's what it requires for you to be loved. By Yahuwah. Again, verse 21. And Yahuwah loved Abram and had compassion over him. And Yahuwah came down and delivered Abraham from the fire and he was not burned. Did we not just read that in Isaiah 43, verse 2? He said, and he was not burned, but all the cards which were bound, but all the cards which they bound him with were burned while Abraham remained and walked about in the fire. That's the same thing we hear about Daniel in the Hebrew boys in, in, in the book of Daniel chapter, uh, what is that? Chapter 3. Many of y'all never knew that Abraham got cast in the fire, did you? Your pastor ain't tell you about that. They quit to tell you about Daniel. What about Abram? Because see, when they, Abram, they got to talk about Haram. So when you say Daniel, everybody was good. But see, over here it tells you about double-mindedness. See, the pastor don't want you to know about that. Because then you might ask him, well, why are we serving Jesus and God? He ain't ready for that question. You know, he'll go as far as Jenny, Gino, Genesis, and Dow tell you they're both the same people. And Haram, now Abraham walked through the fire. Now remember, Yah was with him. Yah loved him. Yah protected him. In the fire, though. Not sitting at home doing nothing. Talking about, I know he's going to watch over me. Yeah, in the fire. You ready for the fire? Have you earned the right? For him not to let you burn when you when this fire comes? What you doing? How you helping? What your work look like? Not what you thinking, what you doing. 
And who are you doing it for? Yourself, we just read earlier in Isaiah 58, that yourself don't count. What you doing for others? And not those who doing something for you, by the way. That's many of us. Well, you know, I'm taking care of her because she take care of me. I'm taking care of him. Uh-uh, he ain't talking about that. You're already getting your reward. No, what you doing with no reward? What are you doing when you cannot have something reciprocated back to you? That's what he's talking about right here. How are you fighting that battle? Because that's what counts. If I wash your clothes and you give me $5, that's even Steven. If that's the cost of washing your clothes. Y'all saying what you doing for nothing? Tell me, what are you sacrificing for him? Where's your works? Where are your fruit? Time to start thinking about that. Time to do a little self-reflection. Self-assessment. Start asking them hard questions. Them questions, you know, that can make you a little uncomfortable when you recognize that you've been lying to yourself. Oh, no, come in my ears. I don't want to hear <laughs> You heard it anyway. But it'll help you. Just here to help anyway, if you want it. Verse 25, but all the cause which, but, but all the cause with which they bound him were burned while Abraham remained and walked about in the fire. So the fire did not kindle him. Just as Isaiah said, it wouldn't happen. Yah word is true. Didn't say we wouldn't go through the fire now. He just said, I'll be with you when you go through the fire. But you're going to see that fire. You're going to see that suffering. You're going to see that pain. Oh, yeah. We're all going to be tested. But it's true. This proclamation of faith. Y'all ain't interested in our flattery. He's inter interested in what you're going to do. Don't talk about it. Be about it is what he's saying. <laughs> but Heron, uh-oh, and Heron died when they cast him in the fire, and he was burned to ashes, for his heart was not perfect with Yahuwah. Hmm. Hmm, let's think about that. First of all, what crime did Heron commit? Let me help you. And who was Heron? Lot's father. If you're wondering how Lot ended up with Abraham, this is how Lot ended up with Abraham because Abraham was with Lot's father when Lot's father died. So Abraham took him on as his son because he knew his father would not be there. And he knew the law said that if a, if, 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 if a father dies, then the brother is to take over the household. Abraham kept the Torah. But what crime did Heron commit? Because if you recall, his father lied on him. He had nothing to do with the deception. The father lied on Heron to save his own behind. So why didn't Yah save Heron? He was innocent. Or was he? Obviously there's no crime that's written here that he committed. Or did he? You see, there's a saying that says it's the small foxes that's the, fo the small foxes spoil the vine. You know what that means? It's the little thing that you think doesn't matter that matters the most. But surely you is inclined to understand my situation. That thing. You see, that thing with Heron was when he said, if Abraham, you know, is right, I'm going to stay with Abraham. But if the king is right, I'm going to be with the king. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. So he said, or he spoke a lack of conviction. He was double-minded. 
Well, I'm going to do both. The law says I'm not supposed to do this, but I'm going to do it if it's convenient for me. Called compromising. His sin was that he compromised. The same sin many of our brothers and sisters are doing right now and nobody's saying, talking about it. Compromising. You're either all the way in or you're all the way out. You obey or you're either obedient or you're not. And Yah doesn't care about your convenience or inconvenience. And this proves it right here. He was burned to ashes because he was double-minded. Well, you know, I, I'm going to do what's best for me. That mindset. I'm going to do that which makes me happy. That mindset. I, won't, I don't want to be made uncomfortable. That mindset. God knows my heart. That mindset. Got him killed. And if Yah is no respect of person, <clears throat> when that fire come, just remember, you heard it first right here. But don't take my word for it. I didn't write this. My job is to tell this. And I'm telling it. And those men who cast them into the fire, the flame of the fire spread over them and they were burned and 12 of them died. Interesting number. When y'all say, touch not my anointed, do my prophets no harm. What do you think he's talking about? These 12 men put their hands on Abram. They drew him in the fire. So they got burned. This book is clear. Full of information. Full of revelations. But it's not for all to understand. But praise Yah for the teachers. Those who are inspired and called by Yah. Those who Yah knew before they were formed in their mother's womb. You know. Those of us who Yah will give the revelation to. Because he knows our heart and he knows our action back up our words. And we will fight. And we will bust your ass if you mess with us. And we're not playing. <laughs> and you better have that same mindset too. Just like Abraham was busting things down and breaking things down. Kicking things down. Tearing things down. Y'all love them for it. But they don't love no compromise, no docile. Oh, that's just too much, brother. No, it isn't. Just enough. You better let this be enough before y'all turn that fire up on you. You be screaming and hollering. Many will be. Hallelujah. But this story gets better, believe it or not. But I'm going to stop right here. <laughs> Hallelujah. I think I said enough. Don't you? So we'll pick back up Wednesday night, y'all willing, and cover the rest of this. Okay? So you want to be with us. If you want to hear the rest of the story, at least the teaching of the story. You can read it on your own, of course. But there are revelations and precepts that tie into this perfectly, brothers and sisters. And we're going to be discussing it on Wednesday. So Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, lesson, Tanakh lesson. We'll finish this up. We'll pick up at verse 27 and get on through the rest of it. Still, got, we got this thing has, whoo, 70, what is that? 70 verses. we only halfway there. Not even halfway there yet. But we'll finish it up on Wednesday, okay? That to be said, I want to thank you, brothers and sisters, for your time. I want to also thank the brothers and sisters, you know what I'm saying, who put your money where your mouth is, you know, and helping me do this work. Again, the word is free. But the time invested and the resources that are necessary for me to be able to do it, now that has a cost to it. And that's what you're supporting. Hallelujah. And that said, now some of my brothers and sisters, I, I think, you know, I may have said this already. So I may if I called you out twice, you know, you've been there once, but that's OK. Not one only, but I'm just saying, you know, because I kind of. I try to keep a list because I do pray and thank y'all for you and ask y'all to, to bless you tremendously for supporting and helping me do this job, okay? But brother, uh, Sister James, my dear sister, 
I think her dad too. She knows who she are. My sister, my Illinois sister, Sister James, uh, Sister Davis, Sister uh, Thornton, Brother Stark, Sister Graham. Praise y'all for you, Sister. Uh, sister Howard, Sister Macmillan, Brother Spites, Brother Carter, Sister Eva, Brother Hardy, and Sister Coke. Thank you all. Didn't matter how little it was. The fact that you did it. Hallelujah. And others who have and will. That being said, I hope this lesson is something that you go back, play this video again, share the video, thumb up the video. But remember, you brothers and sisters, y'all's not going to come. You got It's time to get together. It's time to get ready. It's coming. And y'all's not going to wait on you to be ready. You're supposed to be, we're supposed to stay ready. And all this vanity and pointing fingers and, you know, being mad and angry at somebody because they said something that didn't, you know, that, that caused you to feel some kind of way. I'm, you better get over that. You better get over it. You better pick a side and you better stay. And you, the side you pick, you better get it right. You ain't gonna get a second chance. This is it. You're on the killing flow. Just thought you should know. Brother DFG, again, Shabbat Shalom, or whenever you hear this message, again, thumb it up, share it, and understand, brothers and sisters, clock is ticking. They're warm, they're heating up the fire. Get ready if you don't plan to be burned. Shalom.